controlling the look and feel through CSS. In this video, we're going to cover background and foreground colors, fonts and font styling, controlling the box model, additional directives, pseudo classes, and CSS frameworks. Colors. In this video, we're going to talk through the different uses of colors and the different ways that you can set colors. Computers handle all of their colors in a three sets of colors, all primary, and that is red, green, and blue. The reason for this is because the way a computer monitor or screen works is that each individual pixel has three tiny little lights in it, or at least three tiny little filters, a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. And by controlling how much red, green, and blue is filtered through that is the color of light that is produced. So by producing full on all red, green, and blue, you produce a white color. And by producing none of red, green, or blue, you produce a black color. CSS allows you to control a background color and a foreground color. And as we've talked about through the box model, it also lets you provide a border color. Now the actual CSS for this color is fairly simple, and I will go through that, but I'll talk a little bit about the theory and um, styling of using different colors. A newer feature that has come available in CSS3, which is the latest uh, version of CSS, is gradients. Now these gradients are not simple to generate, but there are web-based generators. So here is one that I've linked to, Colorzilla. And in here it has a bunch of predefined gradients and you can select them and you can move them around you can add things and it gives you the code you need to copy and paste so as you can see this is fairly complex code and i'll be completely honest nobody manually types this in this is all stuff that is usually handled by great utilities out there that are free and easy to use so jumping back to our colors so let's go to the code so let's first take a quick look at the html code so I have created a new Video 3 Playground HTML just for this. This does not utilize any other frameworks. This is just using basic CSS and HTML. I have my colors, so I have a content container. I'm heavily utilizing classes here. So I have a content creator. I have class big red. I have big green and big rainbow. Then I have opacity here, so I have again yet another content container, an orange, big red opacity, big green, big rainbow, and then the gradients. Now this is just the HTML markup. If I was not including any CSS, this would not do anything. I have named things in a manner that is easy to understand. But in all actuality, I could call red first element, I could call it anything I want. I'm just using logical naming schemes so that I can more easily follow it. And we'll quickly go back and take a look. So we had red, we had green, and we had rainbow. So in this case, rainbow, I used a different color for the border than I did inside. Then we have our opacity, so I had an orange background. And everything in here has an opacity, so you can see this color red and this color red. This color red is kind of bleeding in to that background orange. So let's dive back into the code and take a look at the CSS. I go all the way up to the top. So this CSS covers all of the lessons, but some of it's useful. So I have my content container. I have red. So let's get here to red. So in this case, I have the background color written three different ways. All of these ways are valid, and I want to talk through each one. As I mentioned before, everything is defined in a red, green, or blue. Now there are some keywords that are pre-written. If I said background color red, this would still work. I heavily, heavily recommend against using any of the predefined keywords within CSS for colors. And the reason is, while well, red is red, the actual color red of 255, so solid red and then no other colors, is very bright. And you might want to darken that, or you might want to lighten it. And you can't just tweak the color red. What you have to do is, you know, completely do it over. So I highly recommend using RGB or using a hex. The way these notations work, so you have RGB function with a red, a green, and a blue. You have RGBA, which is red, green, blue, and alpha. So alpha means transparency. 
is basically how visible is this. So if you go zero, that means it is transparent, so nothing will show up. And if you have one, that means 100%, and that means fully opaque, so fully visible. Anything in between that, so 0.5 is 50%. So RGB and RGBA are very similar. The only difference is that last piece, the alpha. And if you leave it out, then it, it's assumed to be one. And this last piece you will see very often because it was the first one that was available, and this is hex notation. And this is still also RGB. So the first two characters are the red, the second characters are the green, and the last characters are the blue. The way this works is in here, so you have FF0000. So that's FF is 255 in hexadecimal. If you are not familiar with what hexadecimal means, it is a base numbering system that's based off of 16 numbers. So normally we have the decimal system, which means our numbers go from 0 to 9. So a hexadecimal system means our numbers go from 0 to F. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then the next number would be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 1, A, 1, B. For people who are familiar with computer science, who are comfortable around hex, or have been doing this for a very long time, you will see hex notation in lots of places. But if you don't care to do a lot of mental math, I highly recommend you stick with the simple RGB. So RGB, the numbers go up to 255. So zero means nothing, and 255 means everything. So if you wanted a white color, it would be 255, 255, 255. The visibility of all red, green, and blue will give you white, and the visibility of none, so zero, 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 would give you black. So anywhere in between gives you any range. So in this case, I have red, and I've defined red everywhere. In this case, it was green, so I did my red is zero, my green is 255, and then you've got your rainbow. So in rainbow, I kept the red, green, blue, so green is our middle. I added a border, so the border, I made it three pixels wide, a solid border, and then my RGB was zero, zero, 255. And then if we go to our opacity, so I first set the orange background, so the orange background uses RGB, so it's solid. And everything else uses RGBA. So in this case, my red, green, blue, and then my alpha. So the red opacity is set to 50%, so 255, so fully red, no green, no blue, 50%. Green opacity, all green, 50%. And the rainbow, same difference, the border and the background. Now if you want to change the color of the text, Instead of using background color, you just use color. If I were to do this, I would have a background color of red and a foreground color of red. So the text or whatever you are displaying would not be readable. So let's make it blue. So red, green, blue. So anything that's marked as red would have a font color of blue. And that's really all there is to colors. And you can get an extremely wide range of colors out of simply 255 combination in each, especially with the opacity.